thing. No, nobody knew this was going to happen. I think we were just, we were just kind of hanging out at home. Yeah, we were trying to make plans to go on a little getaway for the weekend. So it was just a Here. Looking for places and just chilling and on our phones looking for something. Something to get away and go do together. So I get up in the morning, um, I could see some kind of smoke out through there, but it was hard to see because all the trees. And I was a little nervous because of the, the wind warnings before, and I hadn't slept that night, so I was up like watching the trees and like kind of nervous, already on edge. Um, so I checked Cal Fire and I didn't see anything, so I go about my daily routine. My brother, he lived five minutes up the road about on Oak Way, and he came down on foot with his dog. and. He just thought it was an overcast day. Woke up completely oblivious that there even was a fire. I just kind of got ready for work and you know, dressed like it was in any other day. He said he could see the flames higher than the house, about two houses behind, so it was already coming for us. Right when I go out to go out, out to my car, like it was all smoky outside. And I knew it was scarier looking and meaner looking than any other fire that been up there before. You know, I've seen some beautiful sun, sunrises and stuff. I was like, that's not normal. We've had a lot of close calls, and so, and they never amount to anything. So it almost kind of conditioned you to um, not worry as much as you probably should. They always say have a list, but when you're in that moment, that a list is not something I thought about. Because I can't fit eight chickens and a turkey and two geese and two rabbits and a tortoise that's in hibernation and six finches and a parrot and two dogs and if i forgot anybody they're dead you know i mean like and shove them all into a convertible you're gonna take your suv which had a quarter of a tank of gas in it and i'm like oh my god can i get off of this hill if there's traffic and i only have a quarter of a tank of gas it was like a whole makeup bag just full of random shit that i was just like I'm gonna put these all in here because I need them for some reason. And I totally forgot that that's what I had done until a week later when I was finally like, oh yeah, I grabbed my makeup bag. Maybe putting makeup on will make me feel better. And then I opened it and I was like, why are there Reese's cups and CBD lotion samples? And and one of those things was actually the shirt that I wore today. And it's a Halloween shirt that has no significance to me. I had just bought it the month prior. I went took a trip to Hawaii with two girlfriends in um, the end of October. And I'm not a, I don't buy dust collectors and clothes and stuff when I travel. I don't buy a lot because I'm done collecting things. But I bought one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I packed it. It's a short sleeve Hawaii shirt. I packed it. You know, we were like running trying to get stuff because it was already, you could hear explosions. The sky was still dark orange at that point. You can't stop and fight it. You've got to flee for your life. I'm done. I'm, I'm leaving. I don't care what I leave behind. It's time to go. Just go. We didn't know if we were going to make it. I watched the house that I lived in for nine years ablaze, like 300, 400 foot flames as I drove by. And I wasn't prepared for that. I, I got no phone call, no warning. You couldn't call a friend and say, hey, what the hell is going on in paradise? It was over and you have been cut out to where it's like the 1500s as far as your, your ability to communicate with anyone. You're running out into the street and flagging down a car of somebody who's flying down a dirt road with everything they own tied to the roof of a car and saying, Where's the fire? How close is this? And they're panicked. You know, some people know, some people don't. Some people are saying it's closer than it is. Some people are, you know, they're just fleeing on foot. They're riding bicycles. Nobody was there. Nobody directed. There was yeah. no form of controlled chaos at all. It was just utter chaos. The scariest part about the whole fire was just being alone in the dark, no cell phone, by myself, trying to navigate. We literally went down the left side of the road where you're not supposed to go to get the hell out. Like, we had we had to do some lawless things. I've seen cars going up down the bike trail, you know? And I was like, go, you know? And we there were people in the back of pickup trucks 
handfuls of people sitting in the back of pickup trucks and the cops are waving them down, you know, and like, it just, it like, nothing was making sense. And there were two policemen, so I ran up to them and I said, what about zone four? And they said, we're Chico, we don't know your zones. And you could even see some of the, you know, officers that were out there on the roads directing the traffic were getting scared, it looked like. Not until we got onto Skyway did I actually realize how bad the situation was. This is, there was fire, like, across the street from the house. I was like, oh, shit, it's right there. The fire is keeping pace with me. Like, it, I look back and it's like the same distance it was a few minutes ago as we, we've been moving this whole time because the fire is just, that's how fast it's moving. A lot of people were getting out of their cars and running towards Chico, the Chico area. And a lot of people were just leaving their cars right in the middle of the road, just getting everyone else stuck. And it was burning everywhere around us. There's fire on the side of the road here and fire on the side of the road here. That's when the reality of we could die really sets in. Um, once we started moving, I felt a little better, but at one point I told myself I was probably gonna die because there was flames everywhere and we weren't moving. But we are alive, and that was probably the most terrifying ride I've ever had in my life. So we didn't even breathe for like 10 minutes. Boom, I had to be down. Yeah, the first night we slept out in our cars and out was cold. So that was that morning. my hometown. I moved there when I was six years old and it's just hard to believe that it's gone. Yeah, I've basically been relocated my entire life. I've known for 16 years is like no more. Um, not only did I lose my home and everything I've owned for 35 years, but I lost my community um, and the town in which um, was like a family to me. I lost my home, my vehicle, 
all my belongings, childhood photos, awards, and lost a part of myself when paradise went away. The scale of what this this destruction is is just it's it's unfathomable unless you get in your vehicle and you go drive around and you know try to comprehend just chimneys standing there but no houses just the chimneys in the forest in the black skeleton forest yeah we got to take down all the trees it's not going to look as beautiful as it did uh all the beautiful spots along some of the flumes have been destroyed it's the beauty of paradise is no longer there right now it's in the the beauty of paradise is now in the people this has been a, a lesson in patience it's not i don't want to i don't like having it end this way really but I'm pretty much at peace with the fact that I, I uh, had many, many years of real enjoyment out of it. Because we were, we really lived in the present moment, so we really enjoyed everything we did, and we, so we got a lot out of this place. We really did. Um, so, uh, compared to a lot of friends I have, not that it's more valid or anything, but it, I seem to be having it. Like, fairly easy time letting go of it. I really, I really am. I mean, it's painful, but, but I can let go of it and realize something else is going to happen in my life. It's been really hard. He is truly traumatized. He went from this little boy that was happy all the time to someone that is scared of an air compressor going off to a rumble of a train track. Um, major anger issues. Um, his discipline went out the window. It's been the hardest thing. It's been really hard. Um, especially for students who have lost a lot and school is different than they've ever had it be in their life and we're just trying to provide something normal but we ourselves are overworked and tired and we're just doing it together. So making the best of it. It's, it's really hard. I missed a month of work just trying to keep him close. A neighbor of ours had died. He lived across the street from us, from the mobile home park. Gordy. Gordy had passed away. And uh, so that was sad that uh, and it was so close to home. So close to home. I feel bad for the people that have their houses. I mean, living there now, ugh. Yeah. I think there's just so many emotions and frustration with feeling like we, like no one knows what to do in this situation when something like this happens, but at the same time feeling like places want to give you help and support you, and then other places are kind of like, well, you didn't lose your house, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our home's there, but there's a lot of things that we still need to like replace and fix or, you know, go purchase new things, but we've just, you know, used a bunch of our expenses elsewhere elsewhere with being displaced so i think that was just like a frustrating aspect and a realization for us of like okay we're grateful that we've had the like support that we had while we were displaced but now we're home and we still need support i've been hearing like there's ben benzene or some sort of chemical in the water now and so like that that it could be like like five to ten years before that clear, clears up and i don't have five to ten years to wait around and wait for a place to to get back to normal to where we can rebuild. Um, but I want to because that's that was home. It's I guess it's me holding on to that that old life, I guess. Um, I, if I can, I want to go back. Um, I, I don't know that we'll rebuild the same property, but at least it'll, it'll be home. But even after it's rebuilt, it won't be the same. I don't know. Maybe I'm in denial. <laughs> yeah. I miss my group, my community, the people around us. We miss our home sweet home. I try to keep faith to myself, you know, we're still a lot more fortunate than other people with uh, all the support and people resources that we've been able to get because I still feel it for 
people that are sleeping in this cold and wet weather out in tents and stuff, we're a lot more lucky and I got to keep reminding myself of that because there's good and bad days, but it could be a lot worse. We're just lucky to have gotten out and got all our animals out and everything too. So. And it's not going to be the uh, backwoods town of paradise that we knew much. trees are obviously burnt to shit and you could see everything around you. It was like a little cove before, like you couldn't, no one could see you because you were just surrounded by trees. But now it's all gone, so I really miss that. It's pretty bizarre looking out here, I, I gotta admit. it's. So we're, you know, we're rummaging through things and, and salvaging some pieces of artwork and whatnot. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge sentimentalist, you know. I can, I mean, there's certain things that hurt losing, but for the most part, I'm able to let go of most stuff. You know, there's a lot of stuff. I had too much stuff in my life, <laughs> like most of us do, <laughs> probably.
Ramsey County closed down right after the fire until December 3rd. You know, we missed like six weeks of real academics while we were not in school for three weeks. And then the first couple of weeks when we came back, we were just like doing some social, emotional healing. That's about six to nine weeks where we actually didn't have the space or like even the mental ability, students and teachers mm -hmm. just weren't there to be able to teach and learn. So now we are and we're moving forward, but that's a whole lot of time in the school year that's gone. We did a lot of fluffy stuff and we're still doing lots of fluffy stuff. Um, we're trying to provide as much um, emotional support and academic support for kids, but we're still like, it's time to get the bar back up there. It's time to, you know, get back to things. And look at these kids. They can test. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> There's testing in PE, isn't there? That's right. Yeah, they yeah. can do it. Yeah. Um, you know, they. I think the, the more normalcy we can provide for kids at school, um, the better for them. So I don't know. One of my nephews, I think I'm looking at a fifth wheel. So next time I have to evacuate, I'm taking everything with me. My nephew loaned us a home. And so we have a place to stay right now. It's temporary. I don't know. It seems everybody else has gone out of state. Um, and I have an offer to go stay in Reno and finish school there um, with family out there. So I might look into that. But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's kind of thrown a, you know, into the, I really don't know. We are strong. We will come back. The two of us are going to work on buying a house, probably in Galea. I would take Paradise and Heartbeat, even with it all burned down. I would still, if there was one there, I would take it. Because Paradise will build again, and it will be better than before. It was great before, so... It's sad when you look at the destruction, because it was such a pretty place. I mean, it's just my sanctuary. <laughs> now there's, it's just nothing. I don't know. It's kind of hard to pick up pieces and start over again. But it will. Hey, my mom's more optimistic than I am. I mean, she's 80 years old and she's restarted from scratch. Right. So if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah, as traumatic as it's all been, um, we're in a good situation now. Um, I mean, it's not ideal. It's not like what we would choose for ourselves, but we have a roof over our head. We have food in our bellies. We've got family that, that all of the family is safe, despite almost everyone in my family losing their homes. Um, and, you know, I don't, I'm not paying rent or anything, which is good. No, no bills. I've, uh, so, and I'm, my job, which burned down, uh, fortunately reopened a while after. Uh, so I, I'm working again. So you know, and if you if you got if you, if you got a roof over your head and food in your belly and a job to, for income and at least some sort of transportation, you can rebuild from that. Like you know, we, it's there's always hope. You know, we were all kind of in trauma brain, so it was it was hard to actually make really good decisions. So and we knew that as we were making a lot of decisions very quickly, wondering if we were actually making the right decision or not. Um, I will have to say that we did not expect this site and the plans and the work and the design that we were doing to turn out so good, actually. We thought it was going to be too crowded or, or the, the um, kids would be overlapping each other. And it actually turned out to be a beautiful design. Like I said, nobody wants to leave and everybody just feels like it feels like home here. I feel really lucky that Achieve is able to anchor in Chico and rebuild and heal actually outside of the fire affected area. The rolling blackouts that the schools that are relocated in Paradise have had to deal with this last year have been really tough. And um, there's something about still being in the fire affected area where things just don't look right and you're still out of sorts that I think um, has been harder for people to recover and us being able to open up school this year in an actual really beautiful school facility where everything just feels really normal and we create this nice normal routine, I think that's had a lot to do with the healing of, kids, of our students and our staff. I didn't expect that at this time this year that people would actually feel 
uh, start to feel recovered and have the sense of resilience and being thinking about the future, what, what the next five years look like. Um, I didn't think that we'd be in this place that fast. And I think it's because we weren't. Um, we're not actually in the in the fire affected area. This year we celebrated Christmas and it wasn't like it didn't take a miracle to put on the Christmas program. I mean the Christmas joy was back and everybody realized it. All of our um, traditions that we've always done we just did and they just happened naturally and so um, our kind of culture of joy and celebration is back in this just wonderful way and so our 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 people are feeling super thankful and grateful, including myself. I'm thankful and grateful.